and lengthen it down and lift it up and stretch for two. Lift it up, stretch three. I, I was simply going out to dinner and I was standing in the driveway behind my friend's vehicle and another car lost control, came up into the driveway and I was crushed and pinned between the two vehicles. In order for them to save my life, they had to amputate both of my legs above the knee. Um, I was 26 years old when that happened. Life to me was so ab about enjoying a physical expression mm -hmm. of the body. Yeah, I feel like this makes me lengthen. From here? Lift up, yeah. Yeah, good. And then round forward. And you can tell me if this position is best for you, giving mm -hmm. weight here. I will do things, um, I will overcome. What's the best measurement of overcoming? Physical activity. So, right. you know, I had this bar over my bed in the hospital. Every time I pulled myself up, I, I felt my muscles fire, I felt my strength come back, and, and it was motivating. By the time I left the hospital, I could do 100 pull-ups. I spent three years in the hospital. I had 14 surgeries. And in that time, in and out of the hospital, I kept saying, I'd look out that hospital window and I would say, when I get out of here, I'm going to do something great. I am really going to live my life to the fullest. The only way that I can say thank you for a second chance at life is to live fully. I discovered skiing in a mono ski and I had my first lesson with a coach in Park City who is from Switzerland uh, and he changed my life. Um, he didn't see me for the set of circumstances that had happened to me. He wasn't evaluating this disability and all this heavy stuff. He's like, look, whether you're blind or backwards or on one leg or three, the same biomechanics and physics of skiing apply. I'm going to teach you skiing. And I have said it many times that skiing has saved my life because it's a, it's a moving meditation where I'm expressing myself. I'm not in a wheelchair, I'm not in prosthetic devices, I'm in nature. I can use all of my body to execute the task. I always had the sensation of my legs there, and so I go in to see this surgeon. I'm really hopeful that he can do this reconstructive surgery of my amputated limbs and, and bring some function and, and mobility back. Um, and he put, he put his hand on my leg the, the, in our very first meeting, and he said, okay, bend your knee. Now, without even thinking, I flexed the muscles in my leg to bend my knee. Mm -hmm. And then I started bawling mm -hmm. uncontrollably mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't have a knee. Mm -hmm. And he just asked me to do that. And it, it is so ingrained in my muscle memories mm -hmm. that it, it was automatic. And, and you instinctively did what he did. You said, okay, when you're laying on your stomach, can you bend your knee and point and flex your toe. And I was like, wow, how much more engaged in <laughs> this exercise will I be if I just even visualize that? Okay, so now here I'm gonna talk about what your legs are doing. Your legs are together, your legs are straight out and your feet are flexed. So you're gonna to try to keep your heels together, lift up tall and double twist. Twist, twist, under, up, four, and while we're here, let's try open leg rocker. So you're gonna reach through your legs and holding onto your ankles, rock back. Here's an extra image. I want you to flex your feet and press your heels down, like drill your heels down into the floor. Okay. So you're engaging the back side of your body. The way Joseph Pilates saw your body, even if you came to him with an injury or something going on, mm -hmm. is he just saw you as a whole body that had an injury.
and he worked around it. That was it. You just did the work. That's for me what is so, I mean, that's why I have it as an integral part of my, I will not ski and warm up without doing, you know, the stomach series and laying on my stomach and, and doing all the stuff to open up the mm -hmm. back body and shoulders. It's, it's, it is for me fun to do, but it is the most rewarding uh, in terms of the flexibility and, and mobility that I get in just a really short amount of time. It's yeah. so powerful, uh, unlike anything. It's a wonderful story that um, Stephanie and her coach, Marcel, are married. It's wonderful. They both told me the story about the very first time she took a lesson. He was her very first teacher and that she had to fill out a form and at the bottom of it, it said goal. Yeah, what's your goal in skiing? And she wrote gold medal. And he pushed me, you know, he really mm -hmm. wanted to see if, if I was committed. Um, and he still tries. And, you know, 14 years later, we're married and he's still my coach. So uh, I had set a goal to win a gold medal in the Paralympics. And the Olympics are coming to your home country here in Salt Lake. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I don't think you have a chance at all. But if you train with me 24-7 for three years, you just might make it. There is so much power behind your declaration, being clear and committed to your goal, and just doing it. And, and really trusting that how it turns out is enough. I didn't win the gold the first off. The first games in Salt Lake, I won the bronze medal. But it, it made my you know, drive to, to win that gold even more. And, uh, you know, I, I say that day was special because I found the two loves of my life. I found my husband and, and skiing. So wherever I feel limits in my life, I have to remind myself that it's pretty preposterous to say, I lose my legs and I'm going to recreate myself as a gold medal winning number one in the world ski racer. That is a crazy idea, but the, the, the power and the commitment I put behind that declaration um, was manifested.